Welcome back. So how'd that fifth step go? Not so bad, right? I bet you feel a lot better about yourself, don't you? Now take out that uh, fourth step list of defects you wrote down. Do you see the patterns developing? These are the defects that have caused you and those around you so much pain. What we call wreckage of the past. Well now we're gonna start work on correcting those behaviors. Now as with most people, it took me a while to get around to step six. Why is that? Probably because this step required me to admit that I was hopeless and couldn't do things alone. I had to actually humble myself and become willing to ask for help. And personally, my biggest character defect heading into this step was my pride. I don't need anyone's help. I can do it on my own. I'm a man. Now, the simple act of stepping into a 12-step meeting for the first time went against my very nature. It was an admission that I was helpless against my disease and couldn't do it alone. I needed other people. Recovery required that, that I humble myself and, and reach out to another human being and ask for help. Very difficult for a person like me. With the arrival of step six, I was once again required to embrace humility and ask for help, this time from the Creator. In essence, I had to admit my weakness in order to obtain His strength. Early on in my recovery, I, I had the fortune of befriending one of the bravest men I, I've ever met, Blind Rick. And we called him that because, well, he was blind. Rick had lost his eyesight late in his teen years after drunkenly stumbling into the path of a maniac with a shotgun and wound up with a point-blank double-aught buck shotgun blast to the face. Rick reportedly died on the operating table four times and uh, woke up from his coma to discover both of his eyes had been blown out of his skull. And to this day, he has no idea why that guy pulled the trigger. A single act of insanity had forever changed Rick's life. Without his eyesight, he was left defenseless. Without his eyesight, he was forced to relearn everything. His first stop, learning to manage simple tasks. So Rick's therapist led him into a horse stable, instructed him to perform some simple tasks and then left him alone. Now Rick stumbled around for a few hours in the darkness, you know, unable to complete a single task. Finally, frustrated and angry, he collapsed on a nearby hay bale and in sheer desperation cried out, I can't do it, I need help. And just then, a voice responded from the darkness that said, I thought you'd never ask. It was his therapist who had been sitting there the entire time watching. He said, this is a very important lesson for you to learn, Rick that sometimes it's okay to ask for help. My friend carried that lesson for the rest of his life, and I never once saw him cower from a challenge. Why? No, because he had mastered the art of asking for help. Rick was the ultimate example of humility and gratitude. All right, you ready to do some step work? So take out that list of defects that you worked on in step four. Now you're gonna make two more columns next to the defect list and label them positive and negative. Now I want you to list out what each defect did for you and against you. How did it help you and how did it hurt you? As before, I think you'll see that the negative list is much more substantial than the positive one. Again, I encourage you to go the extra mile and dive into some of the step work that's attached to this video. See, I walked into the rooms of recovery rife with defects that blinded my soul and confined me to spiritual darkness. God waited patiently at my side, ready to take my hand and lead me into the light. I only had but to ask. See, we have to be willing to accept help in order to change our lives for the better. Ready to have those defects removed? Then let's move on to step seven.